Hello, this is Mary Costello from Florida. Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, several issues that uh, may arise when you are using your dental dam. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these um, issues. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, alternate methods of retaining the dental dam. Uh, there are various methods, but I'm going to demonstrate uh, one of the uh, easier methods to utilize. And we're going to use our um, Wedgets Dental Dam Stabilizing Cord. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with this product, the uh, Wedgets Cord, it comes in a, a container, uh, something like a floss dispenser, and you just pull off and tear off what you need. Now, the other thing about the product is that it comes in latex and non-latex. The colors denote latex versus non-latex. The non-latex is the lime green and the turquoise. That's size small and the turquoise size large. And in the latex version, we have the yellow size small and the orange size large. Depending on the contact, if you have a tight contact, you want to use a small size. If your contact is not quite as tight, you can get away with using the large. I'm going to demonstrate on how to use this product. Uh, we're using our framed Flexidam, which is a non-latex product. And uh, I just want to make a mention that when you are making your hole punches, make sure that you do not make them too close to the frame. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good isolation. And so, all we're going to do here is we're going to isolate from, uh, let's say, uh, by to by. So let's say we're doing some anterior restorations and we don't need to use a clamp. That's the nice thing about using wedge it cord. All right, so now that we have it all marked, we're going to punch it. Now I already checked our dentition and, and our mannequin has perfect dentition. And so I'm going to punch these to correspond to the teeth that we're isolating. Now, it is helpful to have someone to help you with this procedure. I'm going to attempt to do this by myself, so bear with me. I might fumble just a little, but I think I could manage all right. We're going to use a little water-soluble lubricant. Incidentally, uh, the dam can be placed either in this manner or this manner. It really doesn't matter. It's more aesthetically pleasing in this manner. So we're going to put a little water-soluble jelly on uh, on the tissue side of the dam and we're going to anchor one side at a time so let me get my uh, I I'm going to check my contact here ah pretty decent contact okay might be a little bit of a challenge but let's see so we're going to come over here and we're going to place it here in the by and this is what I'm saying, this is where it's helpful to have someone additionally to hold the dam down. And of course, putting lubricant on, on this, it does help get the dam through the contact, but it does make a little bit of a challenge when you're working by yourself. Bear with me a minute. I'm going to try the other side and see if I have better luck. So once I get one side in, uh, in place, I'm going to come over here and go to the other. Line up my teeth here. There we go. If the dental dam, if the contacts aren't too tight, you can actually slip the dam in between the teeth. All right, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you fold the floss over and you get your wedge of cord, into the loop like this and fold it over like that and you hold the wedge of cord now you're going to pull the the double strand of floss and you're going to pull the wedge of cord through that way so that's what I do when I'm having a little trouble getting my wedge of cord in place <laughs> all right so now once that's all done I'm going to pass my dental dam between the contacts again using the loop technique there we 
There we go. Okay, getting an edge through first. And getting my dental dam down between the teeth. There we go. I'm using the loop technique now. Working that edge through. There we go. There. Okay. So Mary, when you're when you're doing uh, when you're not going to use the rubber dam clamps themselves. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you mentioned it's because you're doing some interior work and, and maybe it's not necessary. What, what what might be some other cases where you would opt to use the wedge cord versus placing a clamp? Well, the thing is you need to have a distal contact in order for them to stay in place. Uh, so really, you can use the wedge cord anywhere you have a contact. Obviously, the last tooth in the arch, it's not going to work. But uh, as far as uh, anywhere else, there's really no limit to it. Uh, it. The more posteriorly you go, the you find that you really need someone to hold the dam down. As you can see, I was struggling a little bit uh, myself as I got back here. Uh, in an effort to place my uh, wedge it. But um, it really goes pretty quickly if you do have someone to help you. Uh, I normally apply dam by myself most of the time, and so therefore, uh, you know, these are issues that I you know, kind of work with. So that's one method. In the slide that we have up, it shows using a plunger from Anesthetic Carpule. And this is uh, basically what you would do is you would remove the uh, plunger uh, from the carpule and um, we, you know you could sterilize it of course and and then you would tie uh, some dental floss to it in this manner and then you simply would ligate it around the the tooth I would do like a double surgical knot kind of thing and make a little loop okay and then just uh, Wrap it around, tighten it down around the plunger, like that. Now this could work for like the last tooth in the arch, for example, if you if you so the idea is that the plunger being bulky that it is would keep the dam from slipping off the tooth. So again, then you would do a surgical knot when you ligated around the cervical area of the tooth, see like this, and then go ahead and knot it again. Uh, and then see, this being bulky will prevent the dam from going beyond. Yeah, the little plunger um, works very well. 